This cardboard prototype has most of the elements found in automata, such as gearing, cams and levers. The gears slow down the speed of the handle, giving more time for the figure to go through its routine. There are two cams and two levers. One lever pulls the glass to the lips, while the other turns the bottle to the glass. Last few years. This machine was made for a satellite television company. This is one of my less tasteful machines. It's called the Great Chop Hand Off, and uh, basically what it does is it appears to chop your hand off. Welcome. I am the Great Chop Hand Off. Move your fingers in the gauntlet while I summon up my mystical powers. One. Three. <laughs> Behind the handle, there's another crank. This pushes on a rod which is attached to the horse. This pushes the horse up and down. These three automatons look very different, but they all work on the same basic mechanical principle. This is known as the crank slider. This is a dog chasing its towel. It works because the egg-shaped cam underneath pushes, then turns by friction, the wooden disc above it. Because this isn't very efficient, it results in the jerky movement of the dog above. This is a prototype for a cutout called the Flying Doctor. Instead of the crank slider that I used in the flying pig, this one uses a cam. The cam is a circle of card which is rotating off center. This is a prototype I've made of a mermaid. It's made just from paper. Um, I make them from paper first just to make sure everything's going to work okay and then I can use the paper as a pattern to cut the brass out. It's actually driven by an elastic band here. Um, elastic bands are quite good because there's a lot of friction but they're quite bad because there's a lot of stretch so if they're put under, under any sort of tension they'll just um, stop basically and slip around the pulley. When I actually come to making this from brass the base will probably be quite similar to this one. Um, this is the dragon, it should just slot on. The mechanics on this dragon are the same as the mermaid. This sort of drive belt used is the commercially available type that are used for model steam engines. Like, like the elastic band, they're springy and stretchy, so you get plenty of friction. Um, unlike the elastic band, they're a lot stronger and they don't stretch quite as much. There's enough friction to drive all the parts in this dragon. The handle on this cat, which is eating fish, connects with this small pulley. This in turn connects to the larger pulley via a spring drive belt. Because this pulley is only half the size of this one, it means that I have to turn the handle twice to make this pulley turn around once. If you notice the two pulleys on this cat-eating fish 
They're both going in the same direction, anti-clockwise. If I want this pulley to go anti-clockwise and this one to go clockwise, then I need to put a twist in the belt. And on this one, this pulley goes anti-clockwise and this one goes clockwise. Now I've put the whole thing loosely together and I know it's going to work OK. All I have to do now is take it all to bits and paint the figure and polish the bike. I may add a few extra details as well, such as mudguards and headlamps. <laughs> 